Today, I'm going to run through the configuration and setup of how to remotely control your Wahoo bike computer from your Shimano Di2 levers. If you're running the Di2 group set on your bike and do have the wireless module installed to talk Bluetooth and Ant Plus, there's a few additional things you can do and can configure on your bike to have a better ride. First of all, you can view information on your head unit about the battery life of your Di2 system so you know when to recharge. You can set up gearing information on screen. It will also log your gearing information if you want to nerd on it later on. You can also use a mobile phone over Bluetooth to reconfigure your Di2 system or do firmware updates, but be careful with those. And within that configuration, you can assign any of your Di2 buttons or switches a DFly channel. So DFly channels one through four can be set up and configured to perform different tasks. I've recently covered a video where we had a look at the setup and configuration of Shimano Di2 to remotely control Garmin Edge units. Today, it's all about the Wahoo ecosystem. So the original element, the element bolts, and the new element roam, which are all compatible with DFly and channels one and two. Firstly, we need to configure the Di2 switches as DFly channels. So I'm loading up the eTube app here on my iPhone. We're connecting over Bluetooth. So we need to press and hold the junction box that I have there. The Bluetooth mode comes alive and we can connect to my DI2 management system. So once this is loaded up here, we go into customize, we enter switch unit and we connect to the left switch unit, the left hood, and you can see there switch A is shift down at the moment. We're going to switch that over to DFly channel one. You can see there the top hood button becomes channel one. We hit save on that. And we do the same for the right shifter, the right lever. That's currently shift up. We're gonna change the A switch to DFly channel two. And we hit save on that. And once that's complete, we need to remember to disconnect Bluetooth or we may get some battery drain on the DI2 system. So we go back out of the menus, disconnect Bluetooth LE, and we are right to go. With the hood switches now configured for channel one and channel two, we'll jump into the roam and add the DI2 DFly unit. Just make sure it's woken up. Okay, there we are, DI2 with the ant ID up here. Scrolling down to the configuration, we'll jump in and have a look here. There's nothing to configure in here regarding the function of the head unit for Wahoo Bolt elements or ROAM you get the defaults. So what we have here is battery life and that's all we can see from here. Now how this is configured, is if we go back, back, back to the main page, button one on channel one is this button right here. Button one, or I guess button channel two over here is this button right here. That single press are these two buttons here and here, there and there. Press and hold on here is up on the side, that button there. Press and hold is the button down here, so you can scroll with that. Putting that now into action, whatever is listed on here in the menus with these two buttons, that's what these two buttons do with single click. So at the moment that will be page and that will be history. Give that a shot, one press for page. Scrolls across, again, page. Scrolls across, page. Okay, and we'll go to history just to show you that that button works from there. Cool, there's my history. And back on that takes us to there. Now press and hold, because they do the same as scrolling up and scrolling down. Again, up is press and hold this side, down is press and hold this side. So if I want to increase or decrease whatever is on the screen, which is what these buttons do at the moment, you can see that I can do the same by single press and press and hold. Actually, that's as far as it goes. So press and hold has the same function as the scroll. And that's all I've got configured, so only four, so I'm only gonna be able to scroll into four. Yeah, confirmed. Okay, page again, we'll scroll into another one. Press and zoom. There we go, all the way out to 10Ks. And now that button over there is assigned to route. Single press will take me to the routes. And from here, again, I can use the scrolls or I can use these scrolls, so if I press this one, it's gonna scroll me down. 
I can write it in reverse if I want, but you don't have access to select button. You're gonna to have to take your hands off the bars to get to that one. So if I wanna rewrite that route, I'm gonna to have to press select on that. And not to be left out today, the original element and the element bolt all hooked up the same way uh, to the same DFLY unit and all the button configuration is exactly the same. So if I press this one here, we should page across on all. There we go. And if I press uh, and hold this button here, they'll change screens. Yep, there we go. And press once goes to history. Okay, there's the hands-on with the Wahoo element head units. The original element, element bolt, element roam. And remembering channel ones and channel two buttons do these outside buttons here. And press and holds do the scrolls on the side. So there we have it, remote control of your Wahoo bike computer, right there from your hood. So you don't even need to lift a finger just a thumb for channels one and channels two. Wahoo have stuck with the theme of just keeping it simple, no additional configuration needed, no tinkering, it just works out of the box once you've paired that sensor, so it's all good to go. All right, if you like this one, hit thumbs up, hit subscribe to support this channel, and we'll see you soon.